Hi friend, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a real big collection of trash talks. Same old story, I feel like I have nothing and then all of a sudden we cycle through a bunch of stuff in this household. So I will go ahead and leave you timestamps down below so you can go to categories that interest you. But I have what feels like a lot in every different category. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna start with a rare category, which is sunscreens. I have two sunscreens that we have like, I'm gonna say finished off. The first one is from Sunbum. It's their SPF Broad Spectrum 50. This stuff I enjoy. I enjoy both the texture of it and the scent of it, which that genuinely matters to me because I have to apply sunscreen so frequently and I, I just hate doing it, I'm not gonna lie, but as a pale person, I have to do it a lot. So being able to have something that I don't hate the texture of and like the scent of makes that burden a lot easier. So work through this one. And then we've basically worked through this. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it because it will have expired by next summer. But this is the Trader Joe's Zinc Oxide Sunscreen Lotion SP. 40. Um, this is challenging. This one is really thick, very hard to blend in to my skin. I did not enjoy it. And as a result, it made it difficult for me to want to choose it. Like I already had this before I purchased this one and I worked through this one entirely. And this one still has like, I don't know, maybe a fourth of it left, but not going to hold on to it. Wouldn't get this one again, but would definitely buy Sunbun products again. I have a couple of baby girl empties, both body care from Honest. I have the Honest Eczema Balm Soothing Therapy. This stuff is really nice. She has a mild case of eczema at certain like pockets of her skin. Like we're talking wrists, ankles, behind the knees where she tends to have a little bit of eczema. And this stuff I feel like definitely does rectify it. I will say it doesn't seem like a very big container, but you don't need a lot of the balm to be able to really spread it and blend it onto her skin. So it lasts a lot longer than I would have thought it would. I believe this is our second one of these. From the eczema line, we've tried all the products and they think there are three. I personally swear by both the body wash and this balm. I'm trying the Aveeno eczema balm right now. It's a much bigger tub, bigger bang for your buck, but I do think this is good. And if it were on sale again, like it was on the Honest website, I'd pick it up. And then we also have, which was given to us, the Honest Face and Body Lotion Everyday Gentle. This is in the sweet orange vanilla scent. I don't really feel like it has much of a scent, which is fine. I think the lotion products are okay. Personally, I apply lotion to her in the morning as a part of her morning routine. And I do think it helps keep her skin hydrated. But when it comes to at night, I prefer a balm like this. I think this is gonna make much more difference. So if you have a child who has drier-esque skin, I would skip over any product for lotion and go straight for like that thicker balm product. Oh look, I lied to you. I have one more. There's so many things in here. This is one more from Baby Girl. And this is that body wash I was just mentioning. It's their soothing therapy for eczema prone skin. This I think is like our third or fourth one of these. I love this stuff. I will keep repurchasing it. I'm really happy that I can find it for the most part at CVS so I can use a coupon or get it on sale. But I also can buy it straight from the Honest website when it goes on sale. So again, I think the balm is the most superior. This is second and then the lotion I would just skip all together from this line. Third category, nails. So many nails. I will go ahead and start with my Dashing Diva nails. I don't have the names of any of these Dashing Diva nails, but they are all from the short line. And I really will say, I find this short line is great for people like me who have really, really short nails. I, despite wearing press on nails all the time, really pick at my nails. I am a nail biter by nature. That is why I love impressed nails. I haven't been able to kick the habit all of my life, but there are times where my nails are shorter, like, like really sadly short. And that's when these play out super well. So the four that I have, I have these like nice lilac lavender colored nails. I also have these, these are pretty exotic. They had like a, what looks like a jewel esque type of nail and then it had like a tropical pattern and then a light pink this was a little bit more challenging to pull off twice to get like the, the pattern i find sometimes with the dash and diva nails they really go all in on their pattern sometimes you can have like three or four different nails in a set and i can't always effectively pull off a second set but i managed to do it with these and then two what i consider like neutral leaning nails i had these which were like almost like a dipped white tip and then these had both a like pattern and then a swirl with some glitter. There was a lot happening with these, but I liked how these are basically, again, a twist on the typical French manicure, which I like. I like to see more twists with neutral nails. 
Moving on to impress because I was trying really hard to zero in, which is why I have so many nails on nails that I had had opened first. So I have two from their like newer packaging nails. I have these ones, which are called flawless. I have repurchased these, I don't know, probably three or four times. I really purchased them more for the matte shine color there than I do the glitter, but they're really nice. And then I also have these, which were called shine on you. These are a really pretty like cream nail with the glitter accent. I really enjoyed these as a nice neutral nail as well. I have the ones that I'm currently wearing, which I feel like look like the breast cancer awareness ribbon shade. Um, I think these actually came out for that. It's called Think Pink and this is what they look like. I really wish, I'm not gonna lie, that they didn't have these packaged in this like square packaging because it makes them hard to store with all of my other types of boxes. But it's a petty problem because I'm a little bit of a hoarder with these nails and I do like this color. I think it's a nice transitional moving more into my fall type of nails. And then the last two both came out, I think it was last year. So I have these from last year's Halloween. They were called Live Without Me and they were this really pale taupey gray with a glitter nail. And then I also have these called Elastic Cling, which are a true gray nail. I love to wear gray in the fall months. And then we can talk about nails we're talking about nail glue. I have three of my Kiss Powerflex brush on nail glues, which I use coupled up with my nails. It makes them much more durable and longer lasting. So I swear by this stuff. I rarely get through a whole container though without it like getting gloopy or like thickening up, but I still keep buying it because I still really love having it to make the nails last just so much longer. Two mom empties, both the same. It is my Legendary Milk Pumping Spray. This is basically a flange lubricant love this stuff. It makes pumping so much easier. These are the large sizes. They're both four ounces each. And I keep one in my pumping bag and then one in my house, which is why they both get used up about the same time. I've already repurchased these. Can't say enough about them. I really enjoy the products they come out with. And this works super well for me and my pumping needs. I've got a few household items that we have finished off. Only one of them is not from Porch Cookie Soap, and that is the Poopery Before You Go Toilet Spray in Pineapple Mango. This I had gotten as like an Ulta Extra when I placed an order and they were doing like one of their big sample kits that they typically do. Um, this stuff is fine. It, it's something that I think is really amazing. I gotta have it. And I don't think the pineapple mango scent was really noticeable at all. It did its job, but I wouldn't necessarily say it excites me and I wanna go out and buy more. In that same vein, I also use the Fortune Cookie Soap Cabin Fever Linen Spray as like a toilet or bathroom spray. Again, this stuff is fine. It's one of those products where I would definitely use it if it came in a like Halloween box or a seasonal box of theirs, but I probably wouldn't go out on the website and purchase it. And I don't actually use it as a linen spray as advertised. Additionally, for Morch Cookie Soap, I have another one of their laundry detergents. It's the I Wanted To Be You, or I Wanted It To Be You, which I think is from the You Got Mail mashup that they did. The scent of this was just like a floral scent. I don't really get super gaga over the scents of their detergents. I tend to just find the ones that are both the most you get for the amount of money you're paying because it's not universal. They don't always have like 12 ounces in them. So I always look for that. This stuff is good. It's the only detergent we use for our clothes. We use the um, like baby specific detergent for baby girls clothes. So for now, this is great. I'm gonna keep buying it. I've got a bunch of them because I made a purchase for I think three or four all at once so I could save myself and having to pay for shipping multiple times. So this stuff is great, definitely recommend. On the flip side, this is from Super Tarts. This is super old. It's from the 2018 advent calendar and I just don't use these kind of products. I've had them from Cookie Soap that I tried and it was just not effective. It's Cashmere Candy Cane Carpet Deodorizer. This to me is just like an extra step when it comes to vacuuming. You're supposed to like sprinkle this on your vacuum or sorry, on your carpet and then like let it sit there and then you're gonna vacuum it up and it's supposed to make your carpet smell good. I did it a couple of times, Porch Cookie Soap's version of this, and it just wasn't worth the effort, so I'm not doing the effort now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pitch this finally. Have a bunch of hair items that I finished off. First is a shampoo from Garnier Whole Blends. It's their refreshing shampoo, coconut water, and aloe vera. I basically collect these because they're very easy to coupon and get for next to nothing at CVS. So I went ahead and cashed in some coupons and sale prices for this. It was fine. Nothing like amazing. The scent of it was nice. I basically choose these off of their scent. I don't pay much attention to the actual claims that are on here. 
but I wouldn't say like I'm going out of my way to get these. It's more like a convenience purchase than it is a necessity type of line for me. Other, or I think really exciting hair product that I've used up is this Tresemme Keratin Smooth Keratin Infusing Smoothing Serum. I officially have worked through my second one of these, which is fabulous because this is a category of the hoarding closet that has just like plagued me. These serum, cream type of styling-esque products that I don't really know how to use. So once I finished off the final hair oil that I had, I've been using these in place of a hair oil. I think these are fine. Again, I wouldn't buy these. I didn't buy these. They had come with uh, like larger tubs of the Tresemme shampoo conditioner that I was using for a while. And I just had had these sitting there waiting to be worked through. So I'm very happy that these are out of my life and I'm now working on like the cream type products that fall in the same category in my hoarding closet. My final three, yes, three hair items are all from hair scrunching season, which I dare say I think might be behind us. There have been a couple of days I've had to still like scrunch my hair, but I think the days are mostly behind us. So I have Old Faithful, the Way Wave Spray. This stuff is great. I just hate the price and how quickly I go through it. Um, I have purchased another one just to get me through the last final days, but I'll probably put it in the hoarding closet until next hair curling season. I did try after um, I finished up the way one to avoid buying another <laughs> way spray by using up these two items. So I have this one from Porch Cookie Soap. It's the Sips Tea Sea Salt Hair Spritz. This is a product that I'll use if it comes my way, but I do not love it because I don't find that it has enough of a hold to keep my hair curled all day. Like it starts to lose and fizz out throughout the day. It's definitely not foolproof. And I think part of the problem with that is because of the sprayer. I think the sea salt isn't great with this type of sprayer. And I, honest to God, get like a hand cramp spraying all the product I want out and then I still don't think it's enough. And I'm certainly not going to try new packaging. Like I'm not gonna decanterize this and put it in something else and then use it. I'm just gonna use it as it is, but it's certainly not my favorite. And then I also have the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk Frizz Control Sculpting Gel. This is what I like used to swear by, these types of gel products um, at the drugstore before I found the Way Wave Spray. I tried, I think it was last summer, I went on a whole like journey trying to find a drugstore equivalent to the Way Wave Spray and I didn't come across it. This gel is the best I can do at the drugstore. So I finished this off. Um, I did repurchase it trying to not buy the Way Spray, but I just couldn't because with this gel, my hair is much crunchier. Like it is a true, like you get near or touch my hair and it's going to have like a hardness, a crunchiness to it, which I don't love. And I don't find the way spray does that to me. So it's fine in a pinch, but it's not my preferred way to curl my hair. Surprisingly, just a few body and skincare items. So we'll start with a cleansing balm. I've used up the second of the little trio I had from the pharmacy Christmas collection I bought last year. It's the Green Clean Melt Away Makeup Cleansing Balm, and this was Peach Time. This, I will say, is a nice cleansing balm. I think it's effective. The scents don't really matter. They aren't really that distinct, which is probably a good thing that they're not heavily scented. Um, but I will not say I've been converted to wanting this over my vanilla. I think the vanilla one is equal to, if not a little bit better, and it edges it out because it's so much cheaper. So again, I'm glad I tried it because I'd always wanted to try the pharmacy cleansing balms and I got them, got the trio. It was a nice price, but I'm not converted to wanting to buy these now at the price point, especially price per use usage, but it is a nice cleansing balm. It breaks down all my makeup. It leaves no residue on my contact covered eyes, which is really pleasant and happy to see, but I'm not converted into wanting to shell out the big bucks for this. I also have this pricey cleanser. It is the Youth to the People Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamins Superfood Cleanser. Um, I was convinced from Hiram to purchase this. I pulled the trigger at the, um, the November 2021 VIB sale, and I'm definitely glad I got it at that point because this stuff is really expensive. Now, I'm not somebody who's against buying a pricier cleanser. I find my skin responds really well to certain cleansers. Like that to me is a part of my skincare routine. I don't mind putting out extra money for, but this was definitely uh, on the priciest side I've ever purchased. I will say I did enjoy it. I really do like it. I can't purchase cleansers back to back and keep using them. So I'm definitely not buying this one right now, but I'm 
holding on to it, keeping it on my VIB loves list. And I do think I might buy perhaps like the really big one during the next VIB sale so that I can use it in a smaller glass container like this. My only complaint with this was I originally wanted to use it as my shower cleanser at night because I tend to be a nighttime shower. And I very quickly couldn't do that because it slipped off of my shelf. Fortunately, it didn't break or I would have been so upset, but um, I know now that I can't keep it in there. And so I understand why they use glass. It's better for the environment, all that jazz, but it's kind of a bummer that I can only use this as my AM cleanser. One body product in this little category, and that is this really foolish, but totally it can explain why I bought it, Wet n Wild Life's a Beach Exfoliating Multi-Scrub. So they came out with this as like a random Lilo & Stitch collection. I, I would not have expected a Lilo & Stitch collab, but whatever. I got super sucked into it because of this. It came with this little shovel because it's supposed to be the beach. And I wanted this. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I want to be able to use this in all of my body scrubs. I think it'll be so much easier to just like do a little scoop and put it in my hand. It might also help me not scoop as much into my hand as I tend to do because I'm like a little scrub goblin, but I love this. The scrub, eh, it was fine. I wouldn't buy it again, blew through it really fast. There was only something like three ounces yeah, three, three ounces in here. So I think it got me like one and a half body uses, not a whole lot of product for the price, but it was, I'm not gonna lie for the shovel. So I'm super happy to have the shovel now and I'm gonna start using it with all of my body scrubs. So that's the story here, but I feel like this got a lot of attention in this collection. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like most people that I watch on YouTube or like on social media were plugging this and I don't really know why, but I enjoyed the scrub, I guess. It was more for the scoop though. Final category that I have is beauty. And we have, we have a lot to talk about. I really feel like I have been blowing through some makeup stuff now that I'm wearing makeup on the regular. I'm gonna start with the like non-sexy fun makeup things first. So we'll go with good old standby e.l.f. Daily Brush Cleaner. This stuff is the bomb. I'm about out of the one that I'm currently working on. Um, I think they have just disbanded the jumbo size because I just placed an order for a bunch of these small ones, which definitely stinks. I prefer the jumbo size. I feel like it lasts a lot longer, but this stuff is the best. I always wear my brushes every day when I use them and just quickly wipe them on a face cloth that I only use for makeup purposes. And this is a great way to keep my brushes nice and clean. I also have a chapstick. This is literally the chapstick classic cherry. I basically keep these types of chapsticks or lip balms in my car and I'm able to get through them like every time I apply them. I basically like to apply lip balm whenever I'm driving and my lips feel dry before going to the gym. So this is great. I definitely will keep buying these for like the $1 price tag. I also have two makeup sponges. I have this one from Forge Cookie Soap. This came out with their um, Nightmare Before Christmas collection. I want to say it was like last November, maybe it was December that it came out. It's one of those movies that can go either way, Christmas or Halloween. So it came out like in between the seasons. Um, this wasn't my favorite sponge because I don't think that it was the best one color pop does. I prefer their silicone sponge. And then I also have this ZC one that I got in a ZZ um, subscription box when I tried that out last, I wanna say winter. This one was better. It's definitely shaped in a way that I prefer. It's shaped like the ColourPop silicone one actually, but I definitely feel like it was harder. Even when I would saturate it with water, it was definitely a harder sponge. So I used both of them. They were both fine, but not repurchases for me. I have a couple of eyeliners. One I use, one I'm decluttering. So the one that I use is old school. It's the Be A Bombshell. This is the Onyx eyeliner. This was from like back when I was getting Ipsy days. It was one of my like first favorite felt tip liners. It's, it's like super thick and chunky. It is like a felt marker. Um, I used to love this. I pulled it out, a fresh one that I had from a few years ago that I purchased. And it's definitely not as good as the liners I now love. Like my preferences have changed a little bit and also the evolution of the felt tip has really come a long way. So happy I used this up, but definitely not one I'm gonna repurchase. Slash, I don't even know if they still exist now in the 2022 year. On the flip side, we are just saying goodbye to the Essence Lash Princess liner in brown. I had such high hopes for this because I freaking love the Lash Princess mascaras. First off, this 
is such an aggressive tip, which doesn't fully bother me because I definitely lean on the like thicker liner side, but this is more of a red based brown, not a chocolate based brown in my opinion. And I also felt like when I would lay it over shadow, it would never be fully opaque. Like I could always see the shadow poking through and I'd have to basically like press it on across to add like another layer to make it more opaque so you couldn't see the shadow coming through. And then over the course of the day, it would just kind of fade. So this definitely is not it. It is, in my opinion, so difficult to find a solid chocolate brown felt tip liner, any liquid liner, truthfully, that is nice chocolate brown. And this was just an epic fail. Would not recommend. Thank goodness it was only like, I think less than $5. I have a complexion product that I finished off that I feel like no one likes but me. It's from Revlon, which feels like I shouldn't love it anyways because Revlon is probably like closing its doors real soon. But it's the Revlon Colorstay Light Cover Foundation. It's 12 hour wear, natural finish, SPF 35, and it's in shade 130, which is porcelain. I do believe it's their lightest shade. I will tell you that I like this because it is, as it says, light cover. It basically provides a very light, just evening out of my complexion, which I like. I like the fact that you can see through my freckles on this. I like that it's not very heavy looking. I find that if I had a blemish, I could put a little bit of my concealer stick on it and then use this and it was totally fine. But if you're somebody who has the expectation of like, you prefer medium and or full coverage or even like light airing into medium if you layer it up this ain't it this is really meant for like the people who are looking for something nice and light as it describes so i enjoyed this the only thing i didn't love was um the packaging a little bit because as it would get pretty much down to the very bottom it was hard for me to squeeze out and like let it collect and if i would tip it over it would leak all into the cap so that was kind of a bummer but i definitely would repurchase this and if it does go on clearance if they do go out of business i will probably buy another one just to have it and use it because i do like it especially in the summer it was great in the summer as like a really easy light makeup kind of day so big fan of this and i hope revlon doesn't actually kick the bucket because i also like their concealer stick it's one of my faves i have a couple of samples one it's not really makeup but i'm just gonna go ahead and put it in here anyways it is a perfume sample it is magnolia bliss um, by juliet has a gun I gotta tell you, I rarely come across a Juliet has a gun scent that I do not like. And this was, again, the same thing. I enjoyed it, but I just can't seem to shell out the bucks for a perfume for them. And it, I feel like I'm at a place with perfumes where the ones that I have, I want to use them before I will allow like something new to come into my life. And I'm a long way away from using up any of my larger perfumes. So another gem from Juliet has a gun, but I just sadly can't add it to my collection currently. And then I also have this poor professional light primer. This I enjoyed. I really liked how light it felt on my skin, but it also genuinely felt like it was blurring. Definitely one that I feel like if it was ever in like the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty or like a random 50% off sale, I might be tempted to buy this because I did really enjoy it. And the sample got me like two or three uses and for it to have an impact on me after that few number of uses really tells me anyways, how good of a product it is. So really intrigued by this and I'm not ruling out getting a full size at some point in my future. Okay. Now we have to talk mascaras. <laughs> a lot of mascaras are happening here. So we'll start full size first and then we'll talk about the small guys. So I have dare I say, a new lash primer favorite. If you're shocked to hear that, I'm shocked to be saying it, but it is the Sephora Lash Craft Lash Primer. Bought this on a whim because Sephora for like a while here and there does like 30% off the Sephora collection. And it sometimes like pulls me in and it pulled me in for this primer. I love trying a lash primer and looking at the wand, it is like a nice, even like bushy kind of wand that I feel like allows a lot of primer to get on it, which I can then like nicely apply to my lashes. And I like that it thickens my lashes. I feel like the Milani one, the tubes can be really hit or miss. Like sometimes I get a really good tube and I'm like, oh, this stuff's the best. Currently the one I'm using, I'm like, mm, this feels like a dud tube. I'm not the biggest fan of it. And it can sometimes flake on me. This, 
really foolproof. So definitely want to buy more of this. I think it's like 12 bucks, so pretty reasonable. So I probably will buy another one of this to try it out and see if it really is as good as I think it is. Uh, I feel like the second two will be like the real teller, but so far I feel like it might have finally bumped Milani out of its number one seat. Which like side note is why I love continuing to try new things because even when I think I found my favorite, there could be something better out there. And like that hunt, the hunting process is really satisfying. Second one that I have is this MAC mascara. This is the um, MAC stack black mascara in the micro brush. This got a hold of me in a way that I feel like a makeup product has not gotten a hold of me in a really long time. I feel like the packaging sucked me in first and like the look at the advertising, it was just all about it. But I think my expectations perhaps were too high or it's because I went with the micro brush, which looks like this. So upon researching it on the website, they had two brush offerings. And I went with the micro brush because I really dislike a huge mascara brush. I just think it's gunky. You have little control. You get it all over your lat, like your lid. Not a fan of it. So I went with that. And I just felt like it wasn't amazing. Like I found myself dipping it in and pulling it out and then like feeling like I wasn't really able to truly coat my lashes. Like I had to really dip it a lot. So I can't tell if the stopper was just too effective at wiping off products but didn't leave much on there or if it was just like a drier type of formula so it made it harder to apply. But I didn't have this like wow moment with it. I thought it was just fine. And for almost $30, it's not what I'm going to repurchase. It didn't amaze me at the $30 price point the way I would have wanted it to. We next come to the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Uncensored. So this is not the original. It's like a spinoff of the original, I think, which, so I haven't tried that one, can't speak to it. This is the wand. Um, This one also like didn't wow me. It was just like a fussy, a fussy mascara like at first I thought it was a little bit too wet and then it got dry and like it just it was like gooky I don't know I wasn't sold on it I again similar to the MAC experience even though this was a lot cheaper I'm not convinced to want to go try this I might try the exhibitionist if I can coupon it and get it for next to nothing but I wasn't amazed with it didn't feel like it did enough to my lashes so it's a it's a no for me Okay, now we're gonna move into why I have so many sample mascaras. Um, two of these I got as freebies. The Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes was from the birthday gift that I chose from Sephora. This grew on me. This is what the wand looks like. It's a kind of a weird wand. It has these flat sides and it has these bristles. I definitely liked this. I like the ability to essentially like twirl it through my lashes, which was nice. And it's definitely a drier formula. So it came right out of the tube, good to go. And I like the way it looked on my lashes, but I wasn't again, like amazed. And Charlotte Tilbury is really expensive. So even though I thought it was a good mascara, it wasn't, oh my God, amazing. Let me go shell out Charlotte Tilbury bucks for this. So happy I used it, but nothing I thought tremendously amazing. On the flip side, I have this, another freebie. I think I got it as like a hundred point perk or maybe it was just like a coupon add-on from Sephora. It's the Benefit Their Real Magnet. This I'm very late to the game on. I really enjoy the look of this on my lashes, but it is such a spiky wand that if I wasn't careful and I like stuck myself, Ooh, did it hurt? Like it's a real spiky wand. So I feel like for me, that's going to be the reason why I don't get it because it's just too spiky, but it is a nice mascara. It is very true to their like other benefit mascara. I think benefit is a nice mascara personally, but I don't buy them a whole lot because truthfully, I'm not buying a lot of high-end mascaras these days because the drugstore just normally crushes it. And I stuck with the Essence Lash Princess for a long time. And this is no Essence Lash Princess. The other two I have, I got sucked in as I tend to from time to time with the Sephora, um, like they sell these Sephora kits where you get samples and you get a coupon to be able to get one of them as a full size. And I especially love doing that with mascaras because you basically get to try all these mascaras and then get one that you like. And I especially like it when there's one in the kit that I guarantee know that if I don't like the other ones, I definitely like that one. So I went ahead and bought it and these two, 
did not like. I'm not using my coupon for either one of them. The first one is the Item Lash Snack Lengthening Mascara. So I can't be like totally mad at this one because it claims to be a lengthening mascara and like that's why I don't like it. That's literally all it is. When you look at this wand, it does an excellent job of separating your lashes and just making them long, just really lengthening them. So it, it does what it says it's going to do. I just don't like that. I like my lashes to look thick like almost like the legs of a spider. That's the way I want my lashes to look. And I feel like this just thinned them out and made me look like I had long, thin lashes and I'm not into that. So if you're into that, you definitely want this. But if you're not like me, go ahead and skip it. Then I got this Say Beauty Mascara. Um, I think it's just called their Say Mascara. I feel like I hear a lot about this brand and how great it is. This mascara did not convince me of that fact. I think this is a case of not being a great sample, but I'm not risking it for my coupon cash in. This is what the wand looks like. It is a common wand, spikes at the end, and you got the bristles on the side here. What I find is that there tends to be a lot of mascara clumped in at this like very end point. You can probably see it right now. And then not a lot of mascara on the rest of the wand. It's not great. So I end up like trying to coat my lashes and like can't get anything on there. And then I'm using this like spiky ball point to do it, which is very risky and dangerous for my eyes and my coordination. So I did not like the effect of this. It did not give me thick, long, clumpy kind of lashes. So not using my coupon for this, would not recommend. Woo! As always, a lot of items that we talked about if you stuck it through this whole thing, thank you so much. I always say I'm going to try to make these shorter and film these more often, but then filming in general with my life right now is very challenging. So I do it whenever I can. And in this case, I had a lot of things that I have compiled. I very, very much appreciate you being here as always. And I'll talk to you in my next video real soon. Bye. <music>